On this episode of Micromatic, we're going to talk about the Fujian 35mm lens. So I wanted to take a minute and talk about this little lens right here because it's one of my favorite things that I've discovered. Uh, and it's not Micro Four Thirds specific, but it definitely applies to Micro Four Thirds shooters. If you have a Micro Four Thirds camera, or really if you have any mirrorless camera, you're going to be very interested in this lens, I do think. Now what is it? It's a C-mount lens that's actually made for security cameras. Uh, you can see that it's quite small. It's smaller even than most Micro Four Thirds lenses. Um, and that's because it's made for security cameras, which use even smaller sensors than mirrorless cameras do. Um, you know, it's, it's an all manual lens, which is certainly an important thing to know before you go out and buy one. Um, but that said, I think that's actually kind of a benefit. Uh, if you're interested in getting into manual photography and learning how to shoot with all manual focus and manual aperture control, you're going to be kind of, this is, this is a good stepping stone or a good, a uh, good starting point for you. Um, and so I'll get into why I think this is such an interesting lens to buy. Now, the first thing about it is that it has a really unique character to the pictures. At the end of this video, I'll go through some photographs that I've taken with this lens uh, to give you an idea, a sense for what kind of photos this takes. Um, if you're a big fan of bokeh, and I am, I'm a bit of a bokeh whore, uh, this actually has a pretty cool, a pretty cool character to its bokeh. It, the, the, the out of focus bits kind of swirl a little bit in certain scenarios and it falls off very quickly. You know, obviously it's got an f1.7 aperture, which is super fast. Uh, and that's what contributes to the bokeh, but other things contribute to the bokeh, just kind of characteristics of the glass itself. And now this character is especially good for portraits, um, portrait photography. If you're taking pictures of people, it's really good at, you know, nailing the focus on eyeballs or nailing the focus on cool features in a person's face and then letting distracting background elements fall off. Um, it's also really good for video. I don't do a whole lot of video with this because usually when I'm doing video, I'm kind of filming myself uh, and it's a little bit difficult to do manual film with that. That said, I've seen some really cool video. Uh, if you look on YouTube for, again, Fujian 35 millimeter lens, you'll find some video that's shot with this and it looks really neat. Another really nice bonus to this lens is that it is great in low light. Like I said, it's f1.7, uh, which means that it opens up quite wide, lets in a lot of light. And, and while that contributes to the out of focus bits, the bokeh, uh, it also means that you're gonna be getting a lot of light, uh, even when there's not a, light of, a lot of light available. And like I mentioned, uh, this is a really good entry point into manual photography, if that's what you're interested in. Uh, but this is also a really super safe way to get into adapting lenses. So I mentioned this is a C-mount lens and I'll show you exactly what that means. Uh, if you look at the back of the lens, this is where the lens will connect to the camera. Obviously, it's very different from what a Micro Four Thirds lens looks like, right? This ring is the mount. This ring is the mount on the Fujian lens, which is quite a bit smaller. And that's where adapters come into play. Uh, over here, this is the adapter and it's not scary at all. It's just a metal ring that will screw on to the back of the Fujian lens like so. And now with that adapter connected, you can see this adapter is roughly the same size as the Micro Four Thirds mount. Now I can connect this lens to any Micro Four Thirds camera. And that's really what adapting lenses is all about. It's cool, you can find lenses they're made for other systems. You can find adapter rings that will let you convert the mount from this lens to your Micro Four Thirds camera. Um, and it just kind of brings life to old lenses that, you know, sometimes you'll find really good deals on old lenses at swap meets or flea markets or garage sales. Uh, and it's cool that you're able to not only use these lenses, uh, but use them quite easily. Now, the last great thing about the Fujian 35 millimeter lens is it's dirt cheap. This lens right here with the adapter ring cost me just $30. I'm not kidding, 30 bucks. And that was through Amazon. If you, I've actually got a link down below if you're interested in buying this lens. Uh, 30 bucks gets you this lens and an adapter for Micro Four Thirds. Uh, and that's actually kind of an important point 
about this lens. Uh, it's cheap, and it's good to know because that's also a bit of a downside. Um, it's, you know, it feels hefty, it feels nice in the hand, but you know, there are obviously some places where they've cut corners on the manufacturing. Uh, it's got these cheap feeling rubber rings around the outside. Um, my lens in particular, you know, I've only had this lens for roughly a year. I can already see oil on the aperture blades, um, which is sort of a sign of degradation. Uh, and also if I look on the inside of my lens, and I'm not gonna be able to show it here on camera, uh, but if I look on the inside of the, the lens, it looks like there is some sort of glue or something that's kind of showing or coming loose. Uh, you know, it's the sort of thing you, uh, you overlook in a $30 lens. If it was a $300 lens, I'd be pretty pissed, but it costs 30 bucks, I can replace it if I need to. Um, but that said, those flaws, the, the oil and the aperture ring, uh, the glue that's showing up in the inside of the lens, none of those are affecting the quality of my photos, so it's not bothering me too much. Another downside to its cheapness, and maybe this isn't necessarily a reflection of its cheapness, uh, but what's confusing is that this lens is made in a bunch of different forms. Uh, if you search for a Fujian 35 millimeter lens on eBay, you'll probably come up with four or five different variants of this exact same lens. And most of the times the variants don't really matter. Like there's not much impact on the image quality that you'll get. But the one thing that's crucial, and this is something I found out with a, a coworker of mine, is that the the, the, the width of the back of the lens doesn't fit into all of the adapter rings, okay? So here's an adapter ring, this lens fits into it. If everything fits, it mounts correctly and it focuses correctly on your camera. If it doesn't fit, you might be able to screw it in, uh, but the, because it's not fitting correctly, uh, it's not actually gonna focus correctly and that's a big issue. Um, and so with that in mind, I highly, highly, highly recommend if you buy the Fujian 35 millimeter lens, to buy it from someone that also includes the adapter ring with it because there are different adapter rings and different lenses and if you don't get a pair that match up well, uh, you're gonna have issues focusing and you're gonna basically have a useless lens. Uh, so that's my pro tip. Again, the link below, uh, the Amazon link that I have, includes the lens plus the adapter for 30 bucks. Um, and now, finally, the last downside to the $30 Fujian lens. It's not the best quality. Okay, it's got a really cool character um, and that makes it so you're gonna get really unique original photos from it that you're not gonna get with other lenses. That's great. That said, there are certain photos that it's just not very good for, uh, specifically landscape photos. So this lens, uh, as good as it is at creating sweet bokeh uh, and bringing your focus on individual items, it's not super good at sharpness, or it's not very sharp across the frame. Um, you'll kind of notice this as you, if you take a picture of a flat surface, let's say you even just take a picture of a grass ground, right? You're just pointing the lens straight down. You might notice that the center of the picture will be nice and sharp and in focus, but the outside edges of the picture are gonna fall out of focus, even though they're on the same focal field and theoretically, uh, they should be in focus. This lens just has some weird character where that kind of becomes an issue. And so that really does affect your landscape photography. It's gonna be hard to get a really, really clean, crisp landscape. That said, I mean, it'll do the job. Um, the other potential downsides is that, you know, it's a 35 millimeter fixed lens or fixed focal length, uh, which in micro four thirds terms is equivalent to a 70 millimeter lens on a bigger DSLR. Um, what that means for you, if you're not uh, super literate in focal lengths, is that it is quasi-portrait length, right? Um, it's not a wide angle lens, so if you're used to shooting with your iPhone, this is gonna be cut in quite a bit closer. Um, and, you know, 70 millimeters is kind of a weird focal length, but I've actually found and this lens, I attribute everything to this lens. I've actually found that 70 millimeters is probably my favorite focal length. It's really the reason that I went out of my way and I got that Olympus 38 millimeter lens, uh, which approximates the 70 millimeter focal length. Um, you know, it's a bit of an oddball, uh, 
But if you give it a chance, again, 30 bucks, it's pretty easy to give it a chance. Uh, but if you give it a chance, you might find that you really like it. You might find that you like it as much as I do as kind of a general walk around focal length. Now, like I said, I recommend buying this with the adapter here. This is the box that mine came in. It came in with the adapter and the lens, 30 bucks. Again, link down below. I highly, highly recommend if you're interested in getting this lens to buy it with the adapter just to make sure that the seller is selling uh, the two as a pair and that you get a lens and adapter that are compatible with each other. I want to end this video just sliding through some of my favorite photos that I've taken with the Fuji and lens. Uh, if you've liked this video, consider sharing it with a friend, maybe hit the like button, maybe even subscribe to the channel, uh, and I'll see you next time on the next episode of Micromatic.